Uh, hi, everybody. So, um, as you know, Italy has been out of lockdown for almost two months. I have to say that there, are, have, there hasn't been any increase in, in um, cases, you know, a few bits and pieces, but that was expected. But altogether, the situation is completely under control. You walk around everywhere when you are outside, no mask required. But if you go into a shop, if you go into, into a bar indoor, if you enter a hotel, then you need to wear a mask. That's mandatory. But outside, people live their lives. You know, they, you keep the distance, but you live the, your life like if it was, uh, if it was uh, last summer. Well, like if it was last summer, but with way less tourists, because right now Italy has open borders only for European country, for, for Canada, uh, for China, and a few bits and pieces, but, but mostly it's, it's Europe. So the people that you see around are, are uh, Germans, are French, are Swiss, are, are Spaniards. These are the... the um, the tourists that we are receiving this year. So it's kind of a, an awkward year, but um, altogether it's, uh, it, it feels normal if you stay outside. It does feel very much normal. Well, I'm glad to hear that. And to be honest, who wouldn't want to see one of the most amazing places in the world tourist free? Oh yes, I mean, Guys, the moment they, they take the, the quarantine away from you, my advice, straight from my heart, fly to Italy. You will never have a chance to see my country as this year. Because for us, the major thing, the, the, the one that created the most uh, uh, amount of tourists were cruises, and we don't have them this year. So you would come to Cinque Terre, you would wander around Rome, Florence, Venice, uh, uh, Lake Como, the, the, the Amalfi Coast, with no tourists, very little tourists. So it does, uh, uh, if, if you get out of it, if, if, if the European Union says you are allowed to fly, fly, come, trust me. It's, got, it's, like, it's like you would never imagine Italy when I was a, a small child. That's amazing. So, shall I start? Okay, so let's start with Grand Hotel Porto Venere. We are in Cinque Terre. I'm gonna start with a map. Uh, for those who know me, you know that I always start with a map because that's the easiest thing. And we are located in this little town here, Porto Venere, on the bottom of the peninsula. And it's the gateway to Cinque Terre, the five famous little towns with pastel color houses. If you're coming to Porto Venere, your best way would be by train to La Spezia. You have direct trains from both Rome and Milan. And believe it or not, even if it's Italy, these trains, the Frecce, they're high speed and they're on time. If you're flying, uh, meaning, let's say that you are somewhere else in Europe and you want to fly to visit Cinque Terre, your best airport would be either Pisa or Genova. If you're flying to Milan, driving would be about two and a half, uh, uh, a little bit more than two and a half hours. So, La Spezia, your hub for train. And from La Spezia, driving time to Porto Venere, it's about 20 minutes. I just did it. So, you know, try, it, it is like that. Now, the best way to visit Cinque Terre would be by boat. You can also do it by train, and you can see here, and probably lots of you know about the train. The problem with the train is that you are 90% of the trip inside a tunnel, so you don't get to see the landscape. Well, if you're doing it by boat, whether private or public, it doesn't matter because you arrive into the bay and the towns, they open up to you. And let's face it, Cinque Terre, they're not famous for castles or, or abbeys or museums or cathedrals. They're famous for their pastel color houses. So that's what you want to see. Those Instagrammable pictures, you only can see them if you see, if you see the towns uh, from a boat. Now, remember these three little towns here, Lerici, Fiascherino, and Tellaro, right on the right side of the map. These are the towns of the Gulf of Poets, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to those in a minute. Now, this is the property. The hotel was a monastery dating back uh, 1600, and it's probably 
the newest building in town, and I'm not kidding. When you see Porto Venere, you'll see why. Um, has been refurbished, completely, completely redone, and it opened in 2015. So it's a 48 room property. So it's a small, uh, it's a boutique hotel. It's the only five star hotel in the area. Um, and the, the real, the true luxury of this property is its location. Now, one of the things I wanna point out is when you book, I recommend you to book from the executive double and up. Uh, don't book the entry level, which is the classic double. The reason is, it's not that it's smaller than the executive double. The reason is the view. So people want to open the window and overlook those pastel color houses. And you get that from the executive double and up. So this is on the, um, on the lower uh, right side of the, my screen. That's an executive double. You see, when we open up the window, your, your uh, landscape, so this is what the clients want. So general and, and usually uh, in a normal season, I can easily upgrade them if they're coming in March, if they're coming in April, you know, you, you give me a call and you say, hey, can you do something for my clients? And chances are from a classic, I can give them these kind of rooms. When season then starts to, to move, starts to roll, then it's impossible. So I cannot grant the upgrade. So please remember from the executive double and up. And then if you really want to get a very special room, oh, by the way, I am broadcasting today from here, this terrace. I'm right inside, but I'll take you out at the end so you can have a look at, at the town. But my personal favorite is this one, is the Cloister Junior Suite, because it still has some of the features of the ancient convent. You got the arches, you got the stuccos, and you have this very, very nice terrace uh, overlooking the town. You've seen that the style of the hotel, it's rather simple. It's not too fancy. It's quite contemporary. We wanted to focus the attention on the location. So we wanted to focus the attention on the outdoor rather than in on the indoor. On top of that, think of Porto Venere as a place that it's bohemian, it's unconventional, it's very laid back. Uh, so it's the town of the poets, the painters, the writers, the artists. The gold and the glitter of a five-star luxury hotel wouldn't have worked here. It wouldn't have met what the town is like. Um, wining and dining, it's a big component of the experience. Well, I think it's a big component anywhere in Italy. And here it's, it's a big deal because this is an area where you, you have to know that you come to and it's not a Michelin star area. This is not a place where you have all those fancy, super cool Michelin star restaurant. No, here you have excellent cuisine. And I'm telling you to write home about cuisine, but it's somehow the traditional Italian cuisine. It's like grandma's, you know, type of recipes. It's really, really, really good, but it's not the fancy one. Uh, this is our terrace. So that's where our clients hang out and uh, you overlook both the town and the islands of Tino and Palmaria and the bay. Our restaurant, again, contemporary style with the, with the le uh, like next door to the castle. And uh, we overlook the harbor. So if you get out of the hotel, right in front of you, you have the, the pier where all the boats, public and private, that go to Cinque Terre live from. It's right there. Um, we have a very, very good restaurant inside the hotel, Palmaria. Uh, you can ask Vivian, she was here with me last year. But I have to say that we have very nice fishermen restaurants all around and we encourage our clients to go outside and explore, you know, experience what it's like the town. Uh, we have a beach club. The water is like so pristine, so clean, so clear that has been awarded for over 40 years with the European Union blue flag, but the beach is pebble. Do not expect sandy beaches in this part of Italy. And we have our own private boat. So if clients wanna rent it for the day to go outside and visit Cinque Terre or the Gulf of Poets, or just, you know, just to swim in the ocean by the islands, they can rent it. That said, if they want to visit Cinque Terre, the public transportation, the ferry, works perfectly and they leave from the same pier. 
So this is Porto Venere. The reason I was telling you that we are probably the newest building in town is because the castle that you see up here dates back uh, 1200. The new church, this one here, dates back 1300. And all these pastel color houses here, they're medieval. So you see, it's a town that was funded by the Romans. So it dates back quite a, quite a while. My favorite place out of the whole town is this little church here, San Pietro. It was built on the ruins of a pagan temple in the year 500, right? Sixth century, 500. So it dates back a long time ago. And the new part of this ancient church dates back the year 1000, still pretty old. When you check San Pietro from the water, you cannot tell where the rock ends and the church starts, the building starts. It feels like it's embedded in, in the rocks and it's, it's quite something. Um, and here we go. Remember I told you to remember the towns from the Gulf of Poets? So Lerici, Fiascherino, and Tellaro. Let's pretend you're not travel agent. Let's pretend you're not experienced travel. If I show anybody this picture and I say, hey, you know what, this is Cinque Terre, they're gonna say yes. Because they have the same look and feel, the same pastel color houses, those ancient castles, the bay, just like Cinque Terre. What's the difference? They, they are not packed with tourists simply because people don't know about them. They are as beautiful as the famous ones, but they are like understated. And, uh, you know, to go from Porto Venere to Larici and then walk to the other town, it takes you 20 minutes and it's like a, a communal water taxi. And see, Tellaro, they are beautiful. And for those who enjoy hiking, I know hiking in Cinque Terre is quite popular. There's a trail here that links all these three towns that's also pretty amazing. And now we're going to the famous one. And because it's my presentation, I'm showcasing you the ones that I like. So it's Manarola, Corniglia, and Vernazza. These three are my personal favorites. And you see these images, just like this one, you only can take it from the water. So there's no way that by train, if you get into town by train, you can take these pictures because the train drops you in the middle of town. So you completely lose the perspective of it. Um, there are two more towns, Rio Maggiore, which is the first one. It actually is like 20 minutes from Porto Venere, and it's okay. And there's the last one, which is Monterosso. And, um, well, it sucks. I mean, I don't like it at all. But Monterosso, uh, actually, from Monterosso, there is a very nice hiking trail it's called the Blue Trail, Sentiero Azzurro, that would take you into Vernazza. It's a couple of hours hiking, a little bit, a little bit, trust me, steep at the beginning, but then easy, doable. If you can walk, you can hike. And it's a great way kind of to see the landscape because on one side you got the vineyards and on the other side you have the ocean, the Mediterranean Sea. So it's, it's pretty, uh, from a scenery perspective, it's a pretty wild thing to do. And then if you really are into serious hiking, you can do the high trail that links the five town. You cannot do it in a day. Keep that in mind. So you would do like two or three and then you stop halfway and you sleep there. Uh, we can uh, arrange to, I mean, we can, we can put you in contact with the DMC that does that. If you have clients that are interested in doing it, it's really cool. Actually hiking from Cinque Terre to Portofino, it's a pretty nice experience. It can be done for like FIT, so just a couple of people or for a very small group. Remember the very small thing because in between Porto Venere and Portofino, you do not have big properties. You only have small bed and breakfast or like these rural tourism accommodation. Very, very small. Uh, great place for wine. Um, uh, I have been growing grapes since uh, the Romans. And there's a, the, the wine from this area. It's a pretty famous dessert wine, very small production, but really, really, really good. So if you're here, you got to try. But see what I was telling you about the fact that taking the train is not a good idea. See the landscape, how the mountain drops dramatic, dramatically into the sea. So that means that you are basically inside a tunnel all your journey. So that's why by boat is much better. And things to do. Well, we have oyster farms in the bay. Uh, the oysters here are very good because the water is really, really clean. So people that, that enjoy oysters, they can hop on the boat, they take them out and you taste them right from the water. 
That's a pretty cool thing. And another cool thing is um, the majority of our oyster production, we don't keep it in Italy. Ha ha ha. We export it to France. The French that are famous for their oysters, well, they buy ours because they say apparently that because of the seaweeds that we have that are different from the ones that they have, they got a certain color. That's what the oyster lovers like. And then cookery classes. So we go back to grandma's recipes here. It's, this is the area where pesto was born. So, you know, uh, taking a cookery class and doing pesto and then gnocchi, and it, it's a pretty nice thing to do. And I have to say, locals say there's no pesto like the pesto here. And they are kind of fanatical about it. And the reason is, it's got to do with the basil. So the basil that we have in this area, the leaves are much softer. So it's easy to break them and they maintain the, the aroma. Uh, and so it's like, you don't have like to kill those leaves to get the, to get the, um, the pesto out. So it's, it's really good. And another thing, because we're right on the border with Tuscany, uh, for somebody that's interesting, a uh, cool thing to do is go visit the, the white marble quarries. This is the Carrara marble. And this is the same marble that Michelangelo used to, uh, used to use for its statues. So basically 500 years ago, he would go, he would do the same things that clients do, different means of transportation, but the same thing, he would go to the quarry, pick a piece of marble that he wanted for his statue, and then they would take it to, to wherever his workshop was in Florence or in Rome. And now you can visit that. So it's a pretty cool thing. And well, here are some facts and figures. So I think uh, Julieta, Andrea, and Vivian would be able to share this with you. I wonder if there's any question, if I forgot anything, which probably I did. Yes, Raquel, hi. Um, here's a question from Tina. She would like to know for families, what is the best accommodation? Oh, for families, the best accommodation would be the Scriptorium Junior Suite, which is actually the only accommodation, I'm going back to the map because that's going to be easier, which is actually the only accommodation we provide for families. It works very well because in the studio Scriptorium you have a, a, a living area and there you can accommodate up to small kids. And, and then the main bedroom. Otherwise, what we can do is um, put, guarantee the room one next to the other. Perfect, thank you. Here's one from Jessica. She would like to know what is the ideal length of stay? The ideal length of stay, if you wanna do everything that I showcased you, uh, I would say three nights. You can get away with two, but you need to leave something out and you need to kind of, you know, pick up speed, kind of rush. But uh, three nights allows you, because it allows you to leave the town, you know, to go around out in Porto Venere. Trust me, oh, one of the things that I forgot to say, um, whenever you arrange an itinerary for your clients, Cinque Terre, I know it's a big draw, trust me, I know. But if you wanna know something that's kind of funny, if we ask our clients and my colleagues at the front desk, they do it. When, when clients come back, you know, from visiting Cinque Terre and they ask them, you know, out, out of the five ones, which one is the one that you like the most? Nine times out of 10, they're gonna say Porto Venere. Porto Venere is not one of the five. Porto Venere actually is called La Sesta Terra, the sixth. But people are kind of, they fall in love with Porto Venere. So always allow at least half a day for your clients to explore the town, to go visit the castle, to go to San Pietro, the church that I like, to go to the new church up on the, on the, on the hill. Allow them time to enjoy Porto Venere because they're gonna be forever grateful. And yeah. if you wanna look like a rock star, send them to the towns of the Gulf of Poets because they will never be able, your clients will never be able to come across those three little towns unless you point them out. That's gonna make the difference uh, on your side. I mean, you're really, really gonna look like a rock star with them. I can agree with you. Puerto Venere is amazing. Um, so here's the next question. This is from Maria Angela. She would like to know what is the best season? Depends what you want to do. Okay, so if you have clients that are into hiking, because trust me, the trails here are really, really something. So the best time would be April until 
I would say mid-May and then second half of October, simply because now it would be too hot to hike, really. We have 30 degrees, so it would be kind of really, really hot, challenging hiking right now. If you're coming because you want to take it easy, you want to visit Cinque Terre, maybe you want to rent a boat and go out and swim in the ocean, then I would say June, July, and August. But it depends what you want to do. It, it actually depends what is the client's interest. Perfect. Uh, moving on to Marco's question. He would like to know whether the concierge can arrange all of the activities you presented. Yes, no problem. Perfect. Um, here's one from Juliana. She would like to know what are the virtuoso amenities? Um, it's $100 credit, F&B credit. It's complimentary garage. And, and we always leave in the room some welcome amenity. Sometimes it's a local pasta, sometimes it's a little bottle of, of um, olive oil, it varies. And then obviously we have the upgrade upon availability, but this is kind of tricky in season. Uh, and, and then there's complimentary Wi-Fi, there's complimentary breakfast. Perfect. Um, I have one last question. This is from Priscilla. She would like to know if the hotel is open year round. No, see, I, I knew I forgot something. No, the hotel opens from mid-March until the beginning of November. The reason why we close in the winter time has got to do with the wind. There's, um, there's a, a wind that's called Mistral. You probably know it. And it comes from France. So, you know, it's not a good thing. Anyway, it blows into the bay. And because it blows into the bay, the sea is rough. So the boats cannot go out. And uh, as I was saying, you would still have the train option, but the train option is not really something. So, you know, during the winter, kind of it, the area kind of shuts down because, because of the mistral, because of the wind. Okay. Thank you very much. So... Are you going to... Yes, wait. Okay, let me do something. Right, now I'm not sharing my screen. So here we go. This is gonna be live and... Okay. Your screen froze. We can't wait, Raquel. Wait, your screen is frozen. Oh gosh! So now we see you. Yeah, we see you. So slowly turn the camera. Okay, I think we lost you there. Raquel. Well, did you see the castle and the islands? No, we didn't see any of it. Oh gosh. It's well, Go back. We, huh, we had a big, big storm last night. Very, very big. And so, you know, something is wrong with the with the internet connection uh, all over Porto Venere, not just us. I would like, uh, let me try again, see if it works from here. It's not the same thing, but can yes. you see? Yes, lift up your camera slightly so we can see the castle. There you go. Okay, now the castle and then the town and then the bay. And unfortunately I cannot, and, and then you see the island all the way on the left. Stunning view. Oh, this brings back so much amazing memories. It's cool. Guys, remember, half a day for Porto Venere. It's a really cool town. Very good vibe, very laid back, very bohemian. It's, it's a town where like, uh, oh, and one other thing, um, ladies, no heels, because you're going to kill yourself up and down. So no heels. This is flat shoes or tennis shoes town. So it's really, really, really kind of got these, these hippie vibe. I, I really like it. And um, 
I guess one last thing is because you'll be asked, because I've been asked, is why Porto Venere and not uh, Portofino? Because this is a question that I get a lot, and I suppose that you get it from your, your clients, because Portofino is much more famous. The thing is, you've seen Porto Venere. Everything is real. Everything dates back 1,000 or 1,500 years ago. Portofino, it's a real estate development. It's really beautiful. The bay is amazing, but it's new. And you know, I know that I'm kind of a spoiled brat, I suppose, because I'm Italian, but if a place is not at least 300 years old, I don't care. So Porto Venere, it's really the real deal. So if you have clients coming to this area, have them stay in both towns, trust me, and they will see the difference. The vibe here, it's completely another story. That's, thank you so much, Raquel. My pleasure. It was, nice, it was so nice to see you, although I wish it was, had been in person and actually over there where you are at the moment because, oh my God, just watching your presentation just made me want to jump into my screen. Um, so next thank time. you. We'll start planning for next year, Vivian. Yeah, yeah, the fam. Yes, the fam. So guys, you know, your go-to person, guys that are there, your go-to person is Vivian, if you want to come and visit me. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, thank you everyone who joined us. Please stay safe and stay tuned for more of our webinars. Um, I, I'm looking at the chat, Raquel, and so many comments of, this was amazing. Wow, it's beautiful. Your vibe is wonderful. Thank you so much. Grazie mille. Yeah. Well, so. you know where I am. You know where to find me. And if you, and as I'm saying, as soon as they open up flights, come because it's really gonna be something this year. And yeah. I'm here, so you know, easy. You can never go wrong with that. <laughs> okay, my dear. Ciao. Ciao. Thanks a million. Thank you, everybody.